Wade, man. Appreciate you being here this morning. I'm in God's house. And I just want the Word of God to be a blessing. I want to preach on this thought this morning. Don't keep God in a box. <clears throat> Don't keep God in a box. We find that the children of Israel, from the completion of the tabernacle, that they were led by God, by a, a pillar of, of fire by night and by a cloud by day. And when God moved, then they would move. And they knew when it was time to move on because the, the Spirit of God, through that visible presence, would move and then they would as well move as they seen God moving. In the book of Numbers, chapter number 10, Numbers chapter number 10, and I want to look at verse number 33. Then we'll just read down to the end there. Verse number 36. Numbers uh, chapter number 10. Verse number 33. The Bible says, And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in three days, in, in, in the three day journey, three days' journey, to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass when the ark set when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. Let's just look at that verse again. Verse number 35. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee, and, and let them that hate uh, thee flee before thee. If you will remember that David had a love for the Ark of the Covenant. Remember, he went and brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. And if you'll look at Psalms chapter number 38, you'll find that, or Psalms chapter 68, David wrote a psalm that really resembles verse number 35. He said, Let God arise and His enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate Him flee before Him. And uh, as I read that, I'm reminded that this was a song we sing it before many times. Let God arise and His enemies be scattered. Let God arise and His enemies be scattered. We know that when the, the Ark of the Covenant began to move, that they would begin to sing and they would begin to rejoice. And so here is David and he's writing this psalm because he loved the Ark of the Covenant so much. And he wrote about how that when God arises and we begin to move on, let His enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. Amen. And when the enemy uh, begins to see the presence of God, he begins to flee. Amen. Light and darkness cannot inhabit the same place. Amen. And when the presence of God comes, amen, the enemy has to go, doesn't he? Amen. That's why it's important as we've already sung this morning about coming into the house of God, into the presence of God. We've been out there journeying around in this world all week long. And Brother Eli, I like what you have to say. I do want to be where God is as often as I can be in, in the house of God and the people of God because the enemy scattered. And so we find that there was something here, though, that represented the presence of God as we see the tabernacle and we see the movement. We see that it was the Ark of the Covenant. Now, if you go back to the book of, of, of Exodus, you'll find how that it was detailed. Uh, it was given instruction to, to them in detail of how to build this Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant called the Ark of the Testimony or the Ark of God. Let's talk about it for a few moments. It wasn't that it was a big piece of furniture. It itself was two and a half cubits long, which is about 45 inches long. It was 27 cubits high. And its dimensions was that it was wood and it was overlaid with gold. It had rings in it and it had stains that was placed in those rings that would carry this Ark of the Covenant. 
And, and uh, as we're seen and given the dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant, you'll find that there were some cherubs that were on top of there, and there between the cherubs was the most important thing that would happen in this Ark of the Covenant, and there is where the presence of God would dwell or rest, would be between these wings of, of, of these, these angels that was outstretched there, the, the very presence, the Shekinah glory of God would be, and there the Ark of the Covenant was placed in the holy place and there as it was in the, the holy of holies, there its presence would illuminate and, and light would be seen as the presence of God was there. The ark still uh, exists and, and uh, you may remember those uh, movies, Indiana Jones and uh, you know how, how they, they uh, uh, tried to uh, look for the ark of the covenant. But I want to tell you that it was more than the ark that meant something. It was the presence of God that meant everything. Let's talk about this ark of the covenant. It played a great role because we see that the ark of the covenant was moved. And uh, as the ark of the covenant moved, they would move. But there was something that was more important. It was that pillar cloud by day, the fire by night, that dwelt between the wings of the cherubs uh, there. As they were there, we know that when it would move, they would move. And so the presence of God had a great influence upon the people of God. But this ark of the covenant meant something great to the Israelites because it was where God's presence dwelt. Inside of this Ark of the Covenant, there were three things placed inside of there. Do you remember what one of them was? They ate it every day. There was a manna that was placed in there. As we look at this manna for 40 years, God made provision for the nation of Israel in providing them something to eat. Amen. Uh, the Lord God tasted and see that God is good. God was good. He provided for them for 40 years. No, I'm 40 years old right now. Imagine that all my life going out every day and picking up manna because God had provided that. And so here they are. They put this pot of manna inside the Ark of the Covenant because it was God's provision. The next thing that was inside of there was a rod. It was a rod that was Aaron's budding rod. Do you remember the authority of that rod? We think of that and we think of the authority because it was with that rod that judgment was placed upon Korah's family and there uh, they died because of the authority of that rod. So we look and, and man was the provision of God. The rod was the authority of God. And there was a third thing that was placed inside that ark. Do you remember what it was? What was it? It was the law. It was the tablets that was placed inside of there. And they placed uh, the, that covenant that God had made with, with His people. As he had written the law down and gave them His law and what He wanted them to follow because they were in covenant relationship with Him. And so with all three of these things inside of, of the Ark of, uh, uh, of the Covenant, what was the most important thing that was inside of this Ark of the Covenant? I'll give you a clue. I've already given you the one. It was the law. It was the covenant. You see, because God, when we look at this Ark of the Covenant, we see that when they sang that God arise and His enemies be scattered. Amen. As long as they had covenant with God, they knew that the enemies would be scattered. That was the most important thing that was there in that Ark of the Covenant was the law of God because He brought them into relationship with God. They had a covenant with God. In fact, you'll find that at Solomon's temple in 1 Kings 8, you'll find that there when they were dedicating the temple that the pot of the man was gone. And you'll find that Aaron's budding rock was gone. But there was one thing that was left inside of there. Amen. As we read, the Bible said there was nothing in the ark save two tablets of stone which Moses put there at war. What was the most important thing? It was these stones. It was the covenant. Because you'll read that there the presence of the Lord fell. Because there was a covenant. Not because of God's provision. Not because of God's authority. But because of God's covenant, His presence came down. Oh, thank God for the covenant relationship 
that we have with God. It is because of that covenant relationship that we can sense and experience the presence of God. I look at this Ark of the Covenant though, and it appears that God's people got their eyes off of this covenant relationship. And they got it upon the Ark. And what the Ark was, instead of the presence of God, that rested between the wings of the chariot. Can I relive the history of Israel a little bit with you this morning? You'll find that, remember when the nation of Israel came to the brink of the Jordan. The Bible says in Joshua chapter number 3, that there they were at the brink of the Jordan, and it was overflowing the Jordan. They were there, and they needed to cross the Jordan. What would they do when God began to speak? And the Bible says in Joshua 3.13, And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest, now listen, that bear the ark of the Lord, of the, the Lord of all the earth, as soon as their feet shall touch the waters, the Bible says, that the water shall be cut off from that which stand above and shall come to a heap. We find that God did this for them again. Here they were at the Red Sea and God opened up the Red Sea. But here we find the Ark of the Covenant. Here we find the High Priest. Here they are and they step into the brink of the Jordan. And all of a sudden the waters are cut off and they stand up in a heap. And God's people begin to walk across the Jordan River in safety. Here they are because of the Ark of the Covenant, Daniel. Here is the Ark of the Covenant. And every one of those millions walk by and they see the Ark of the Covenant. And they see what God had done. And they walk across on dry ground, Sister Jan. You may remember another story. Here they are around the walls of Jericho. The walls are high. Here are God's people and in Joshua chapter number 6. The Bible says that there they were with the ark of the Lord. Day number 1 they walk and the ark of the Lord leads them and they walk around the walls of Jericho. Nothing happens. Day number 2 there they go with the ark and they go out and they walk around the walls of Jericho. In 6 days the Bible says that this happened. And then on day Day number 7, Joshua 6.15, the Bible says, And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose up early about the dawning of the day and could pass the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they could pass the city seven times. And the Lord came, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the, tr the priest blew the trumpets. Joshua and the people, a shout for the Lord had given you the city. And we know that the walls came down. Here was the Ark of the Covenant again. And they see the Lord move. The walls came down. Here the river is open. Here the walls come down. You may remember a time when the children of Israel begin to look at this Ark of the Covenant as their victory. You remember when they were fighting against the Philistines? There was God's people fighting against the Philistines. And, and uh, the Philistines were winning. And so they decided that they would go and they would get the Ark of the Covenant. Remember Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas? They hide behind the Ark of the Covenant, but they were killed. The word came to Eli that Hophni and Phinehas were killed. And he is upset. And then the word comes again that the ark of the covenant was taken. Eli, that heavy set man, falls over backwards and he breaks his neck. You see, as we begin to look, we realize that the ark of the covenant can be taken for Sometimes we put God in a box and we trust the box more than we trust God. We trust church. We say, well, if I'll go to church, then everything will be okay. Well, if I'll just read my Bible what I have to, it'll be okay. If I say my bedtime prayers, it'll be okay. Let's put God in a box. 